Morning everybody. It's uh, Sunday, January 27th. Um, just a little bit after noon. Um, got the door open today. It's 33, 34 degrees out there, which is fairly, fairly warm. Although yesterday it was 60 degrees here. But we woke up this morning, it was cold again, and we had a little bit of snow. So, that's about it. Last couple weeks, um, since our last video, I haven't really done much of anything out here in the garage. Um, we have been moving some vehicles though, and uh, I think in the last, oh, I'm going to say, month, we've had four leave. So, this week here, um, we sold two. We sold the um, 95 Silverado um, last Sunday. That went. And then um, Friday night, we sold the little Toyota race car. Yes, that's right. We sold the little race car. Um, that was kind of a tough one for me. Um, the little race car. I was really kind of into that one. But the simple fact of the matter is, with the new government tax laws here in the States, um, my monthly take-home salary um, was about $400 less. Um, basically, that's how much more I'm paying in income tax um, out of my take-home. So that, for the most part, no one voided any, any budget that we would have had to actually run a race car next year. So with that in said in mind, um, although it was fun to work on, I just couldn't see it sitting around here doing nothing. So I did sell it, and interestingly enough, the guy that originally built that little car um, bought it back. So that was kind of cool. Um, he was he was really excited to have the car back, so that's always always pretty awesome. So we got four of them gone. Um, what we end up with here is um, now we still have our Volkswagen, our '83 GTI Rabbit. We have the uh, Subaru four-wheel drive hatchback that the camera's sitting on right now, and we have the. Um, 1977 F-150 Ford. Um, we still have that that one. So I think we're probably going to be working on the GTI. It'd be the be the next one. Um, I the Ford the 77. I got kind of got. I'm torn back and forth about that whether or not to keep it or or let that one go as well. The biggest problem I have with the Ford is with it being a long bed, it won't fit in my garage. So that kind of limits it. I mean, I can take it apart and bring, you know, pieces, parts and pieces in and work on and stuff, but I don't know. I have, um, I have been, you know, kind of thinking and looking for a long time that I want would like to do some kind of a hot rod pickup project, uh, preferably something uh, short bed, step or fleet side doesn't really matter, um, something older and something that we can basically kind of do a rest of mod type restoration. Um, and with it being older, it would be exempt from emissions and so forth if it's uh, 1967 or older. Um, any of the newer ones, we can get around that too, but uh, older would be kind of cool. And um, we could just build something totally ridiculous. Um, so I've been kind of looking around at some stuff there. I've seen a couple so far. Uh, one I kind of liked, I just kind of on the fence on and I've got some other ones I want to look at too so we'll see on that but the pressing business at hand is um, there's a little game going around out there if you will game I'll call it a 65 Chevy or 65 Ford rather started it and um, it's your favorite tool 
Well, my buddy Terry, WTBM123, has tagged me um, to bring out my favorite tool and talk about it, say why. And, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a hard one if you think about it. Um, you know, when somebody asks you, you know, straight up, what is your favorite tool? And I thought, I've been thinking about this for a day and a half now. And, you know, a lot of it is kind of relative. It comes down to your favorite tool really kind of comes down to what you're doing at the time. Um, you can have a, you know, a wood saw that you just love and you just, you know, every time you're doing a wood project, you're using it and everything like that, but it really doesn't matter much if you're cutting iron pipe. So it's kind of relative as to what you're doing. So, but I think I did kind of square down on the one tool that I have that I actually, I, I'm going to call it my favorite tool as far as the, you know, tools that I use. Um, but along the way, I've come up with some, some different things too. Let's uh, talk about that for a minute. There, get you guys. Okay, um, first off, I kind of laid out some stuff here. So, first off, um, what I was going to say is, here you go. Um, spending years and years and years working in the garage, and I always worked flat rate. So what flat rate basically means is you get paid X amount of dollars for a specific job, and it doesn't matter. I mean, a job may have a rate of an hour. You're going to get paid an hour, and if you take 20 minutes to do the job, you still get your hour's pay. If you take three hours to do the job, you still get your hour's pay. So when you're working you know, in a flat rate situation, these very simple tools right here <clears throat> play a big, big role in what you do and how you do it. Um, I use air tools for everything. Um, the, I, I use basically the only time I would use a hand ratchet or you know anything like that is when I could not access it with an air tool. Um, and especially this little guy right here. This is a quarter inch air ridge, quarter inch drive. It's fairly small and I actually would take dashboards apart with this. Um, back in the day, I had a whip hose on it that had a regulator. And what I would do is turn the air way down on the regulator that I could put screws. I had screw screwdriver tips that go on here. And I could put screws and plastic dashboards and not strip them out. I could turn it down that line. But just... So... I mean, in those days, these here were my main main tools. I mean, I would use these things all day long. Um, I actually did at one time, and to be honest with you, in getting stuff out to do this, I don't know where it is, and that kind of bothers me a little bit. But I had a quarter-inch drive butterfly ratchet. I do have a 3 8 drive as well. The 3 8 drive is currently in my toolbox at work. But I had a quarter inch drive butterfly that I used to use for a lot of interior stuff. And I just don't know where that is. So those tools there have gotten a lot of use for me and meant a lot for me at the time. Now, when I'm dabbling with bodywork and um, sheet metal, making patches and stuff like that, one thing that I have that I really, really like is this guy here. And this is an air nibbler. And you'll see... On the, on the tip there, there's a little pintle. That pintle goes up and down. That slot, you put your sheet metal in the slot, and that pintle goes up and down, and it cuts it. So it's very easy to cut different shapes out of sheet metal. You just follow it right along. It actually, it's you can do a circle with it, all kinds of stuff. Great tool for, you know, cutting sheet metal, you know, and, and any, any lighter metals that'll fit in it, it'll actually do. Uh, it's fast, um, and you end up with, you can do some really precision cuts with it. I like that tool a lot. Now, also on the same thing, okay, now you got your sheet metal patch head out, or you're hanging a panel or something like that. Next thing up is your Glico's. 
and basically how the how the clicos work. You know, you, most of you guys are familiar with it. I'm sure some are not. You put your push your clico and your pliers like so and you'll notice the end of it if we get up here one hand sorry guys I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time but you do that and it fits through a very small hole um, if I remember right it's eighth inch or maybe slightly bigger than that you drill a hole and line up your panels drill a hole through them put this in and you release it and it flares out, gets fat. So it holds the two panels together. I think the Clico is a, just a very, very good tool for, you know, that type of stuff. You know, hanging panels, working stuff. I also have some magnets that I actually use a lot for doing that too. You put the two, put the, your two pieces on. It's good, great for butt welding. Put a magnet across both pieces and it, and it holds it right in place. The other tool um, that really is nice is this here. It's a sheet metal hole cutter. Um, and basically, it uh, has all kinds of different, um, different bits, tips that go on it, different sizes. Um, I use this for a spot weld cutter. Um, it's got a center center point here the center point is spring-loaded you press down and it keeps it keeps you centered and you cut the hole with that I can say it's a it's a great spot weld cutter um, very very handy for working with sheet metal and stuff like that doing you know any kind of holes in it um, I actually like like this little tool set a lot I've used it quite a lot like I say typically more than anything, what I've used it for is uh, sheet cutting spot welds. Um, just a neat little cutter. Um, okay, so that being said, we're going on for what I I'm going to call my favorite tool. And what that is is this little guy right here. That's my power probe. Okay, and um, this is for doing electrical work. Um, it works great as a it's a circuit tester. Um, you can test continuity with it. Um, you can, you know, check components with it. It'll it'll tell you you know what you've got. Power or ground on a circuit. It uses a 12 volt power source and uh, any power source will do and it comes with the little alligator clips you can connect it to a vehicle's battery like this or it comes with this adapter that you can actually plug it right into a vehicle cigarette lighter comes with a fairly long um, lead on it and get you a ways away from anything and I, it also comes with an extension cable that will get you even farther so I've actually had this thing hooked up to trucks and I can go all the way in the back and work on trailer wiring or whatever with this but it's a very simple tool and basically what it does it's got some uh, pair of LED lights on it that light up your work work surface or what's whatever's in front of you um, just statically if you this is the negative terminal of our battery if you watch it, there you go. That tone and that green light doing that indicates that that is a negative circuit that you're probed into. And vice versa, you go over here on the positive terminal, you get a, hopefully it's coming out, it's a red light with a different tone. That indicates that you know, the circuit that you just probed is a hot circuit. Additionally, um, what it will do is you can use this as a continuity tester as well. It's got this little lead here. And if you you can check through a circuit with it like that. Like I say, I'm sorry guys, I'm not really handy at doing all this with one hand, but but anyways, you uh, can 
get this on here. There we go. Now it's checking continuity, basically right through it. And that gives you a green light and that specific tone there. The tone you can turn off. This lead um, is also a ground lead. Um, so here you go. Now the one neat thing about the power probe, we're going to hook up our ground lead on this halogen bulb right here. And then we're going to probe. Get it hooked up. Okay, so it's indicating that there is continuity in the circuit. This switch right here, this little rocker switch, will either apply power or ground to the probe. So if you rock it forward, what it is, is it applies, you know, your 12 volt power out the lead. And you've got a ground lead here, so you've completed the circuit, so it's really good for testing bulbs, um, actually motors, solenoids, anything that will run, turn that off, um, anything that will, you know, operate on 12 volts with a power and a ground circuit, you can test with this. And it's actually really cool. If you rock it back, you can apply ground to something. We're not going to do it to our bulb, of course. But like I say, you rock it forward, it applies power, lights up. Very cool. we got a good bulb, and we know it. Um, where I find this extremely handy is working up in confined spaces under dashboards and also working on trailer wiring, um, tail lights, things like that that are back away from the vehicle. You just go back and you can do all your testing with this one tool um, with the long lead set especially and get you back around trailers and it also comes with a longer um, probe that you can put in it and get up into harder to reach areas. So, of all the stuff I've got, and I've got a lot of tools, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this, this little deal right here is pretty much my favorite favorite that I have. This is the Power Probe. This is the Power Probe 2. Um, it's the second version of this. I believe there's uh, two or three newer versions than what I have and I'm sure they have different features and function differently but this is the one I have and I'm gonna claim that as my favorite tool and stick with that so there you go there um, like I say it's it's a hard one and if you get you get thinking about it you know and you get looking around through your stuff and you're trying to decide you know what of tools that you have that you really like you know it's um it's kind of a kind of a hard thing to uh, come out so that's what I got I'm gonna call the power probe my power my favorite tool um, and the other stuff that I showed I depending on what I'm doing I, my favorite tools as well so one thing I do say uh, and this is just a little sideline um, that I will throw out there. I have in my uh, in my toolbox at work. I have a 10-inch Crescent brand adjustable wrench and a 8-inch Crescent brand adjustable wrench. And both of those um, wrenches have I think four or five grind marks on the top of them as identifying marks and what those marks are is those were tools um, those two wrenches were my dad's and of course my, you know, my dad's no longer with us and I have those two tools and those two wrenches and they're in every toolbox I ever have at the job I'm at and those were his tools and they just I can't describe what they mean to me so, from a, you know, a, a that side of it, those are my favorite tools. So, but it's just a, you know, there's a sentimental value, if you will. Like I say, they, they belong to my father. So, I didn't include them in this. This is just stuff that I actually use that I think is, is you know, my favorites. But 
you know those two those two wrenches as simple simple tools you can have an adjustable wrench they 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 mean a lot to me they probably mean more than any tool that I have so okay there you go now as part of this whole thing the next part of our little scenario here is I'm going to tag two people and those two people that I tag they're going to have to um, show their favorite tool so basically it's tag you're it first up on this is a guy that um, you know I like his videos he's handy as all get out does good stuff and he's a good guy and uh, you know a really good guy to converse with and so forth and that would be Mark from the second gen garage Fatster Cat is his YouTube channel F A T Stir Cat. Um, Mark, tag, you're it. Um, I would like to see your favorite tool and I'd like to know why. Hear the little story behind it. And the second one that I'm going to tag is a guy who's been around for a while and uh, done a lot of stuff. He's into cars, heating, air conditioning building maintenance type stuff I'm sure he's got some interesting tool there somewhere and that would be Cecil 6711 Cecil tag your it I want to see your favorite tool and uh, hear why and um, that would be kind of cool so there you have it that's our favorite tool video that's what's going on around here um, tonight uh, being Sunday of course I'm gonna beat the drum again mumble it's time for the mumble. Um, if you want to get on the mumble chat and chat with everybody, um, got a few new faces that we had in there last week. That was really cool. Um, go to WTBM123's channel. He has a video on getting yourself um, set up on the mumble. It's very easy to do. Basically, you just need your computer and a you know, a headset usually actually works pretty good. It's a push to talk type thing. So if you have a headset, that works out really well. But some guys do it on their phone, um, just to go earpiece, whatever. But like I say, WTBM 123's channel um, has a very, very good um, instructional video on how to get yourself going on the mumble. So check it out. Mumble's a good thing. Now, the last tool, if you will, that I want to talk about, and then I'm going to stop rambling and go away, is one that I don't know if a lot of people think about. That's it, right there. Because basically, um, whenever you're, uh, you know, doing anything, information is key. And what will look at uh, Rick fixes video um, information is key and because you know of days gone by we had books and manuals now we have this a very valuable tool um, anything that you want to do you can usually find out how and the best ways on the computer either Google it um, do YouTube something like that the information is out there now and um, if you know how to look for it and where to look, like I say, you you can figure out about anything. Like I said, YouTube, very good source for that. A lot of videos out there on I found videos on anything that I've wanted to do regardless. I found how to videos on YouTube and um, definitely, you know, when you Google it or you know whatever search engine you, you particular use, you can find all the information. So all that being said, um, I guess that's all the ramblings I have for today. So um, check out the mumble tonight, and uh, we'll get something else going on. We'll be back at you. So until then, take it easy.